We are in First Peter, and what we're going to, what we actually started initiating is that we're going to start taking sections of that, and in a sense, sort of obscure sections at first to show how much uh, Peter went to the Psalms and lines up subject after subject. So this isn't going to bear witness so much um, with with only this only a second subject uh, pertaining to the lion. Um, but once we get going, you'll see over and over and over again that this is probably where Peter got his definitions for things instead of what you might call the nominal definitions that the church has. He literally found it, you know, because back then they didn't have a New Testament. And Jesus said, search the scriptures, they are they which testify of me. And he was talking about the Old Testament because that was the only Bible they had at that time. And he's saying, get in there and you'll see me. And they did. We are in 1 Peter 5, 8. <clears throat> be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking him whom he may devour. All right, so last uh, time we were together last week, uh, we we went into Timothy, and we also noticed that um, uh, that the Apostle Paul used this phrase, and that was in Timothy Second Timothy four. It was like sixteen through eighteen, but particularly, uh, uh, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion, and he's not really talking about a physical lion, and uh, he while it is the enemy, it is the same enemy, but it's going through people, and they're using their mouth to tear down, to falsely accuse, to judge, to um, uh, attack, um, if you will, the lamb, the lamb in us. And, and if we're born again, we have the lamb in us, that's Jesus Christ, the, the crucified one, uh, is on the throne, the lamb is on the throne, and he's in us. And so, um, so one of the things that the enemy is always trying to do and do through people is to attack those who, um, that, so that when they get in a bad situation or an unfair situation, they react either uh, by using their mouth or doing something like the, the um, evildoers. We discussed that. We'll probably get into that more eventually. But the evildoers, and the evildoers, if you remember the definition, was those who use the mouth of the line, those who do this kind of attacking. But it's behind it all is the enemy, and the enemy is trying to get us to deny Jesus. Okay, so we say, well, you know, if the government ever turns and takes away our Bible and tells us if you don't deny Jesus, then we'll put a bullet in your head. We go, well, if that ever happens, I'm going to be with the Lord. Now, maybe y'all never thought of that, but I did when I was a young hippie Christian and, and was ready to, like Peter, lay down my life. Okay, well, that Peter's our example because he's the one who's writing this and he's the one who... Um, was put in that situation and we can be put in that situation <clears throat> through through the things that first peter's talking about what he's put in his letter um, and we can deny the lord exactly the way peter did and that is we can respond back with the the lion the mouth of the lion uh, and and start justifying and start saying you know all this stuff so uh I can guarantee you that the, all of our classes and all of the subjects that we get into through here are going to, to uh, back that up and are going to say it again and then again and again because this is Peter's message, the sufferings of Christ and being with Jesus in them and not just seeing them. We're talking about specific ones, though. I mean... You know, somebody get mad at you at work, and that's not the sufferings of Christ, okay? That's you, and you, if you did something wrong to make them mad, then that's on you. <laughs> but we're not talking about every trial. We're talking about specific trials 
that God allows the enemy to go after you to see if you're going to deny the Lamb or if you're going to be with the Lamb in that spirit. Okay, so we went into Timothy and Timothy says that and and again, he talks about deliver me from every evil work. And, and the evil work is the work of the evil ones and uh, uh, evildoers. Uh, and uh, delivered is what? Our soul. It is the, this is the cry. And we went through tons of scriptures last time because I was so excited that I was ro rolling like a freight train trying to, to show you over and over and over again that um, the scriptures are declaring uh, the salvation of our souls is when we have gotten to a place where we're not going to respond back to the enemy or our enemies or, or, or the circumstances that would call for us to try to justify ourselves. Rather, the Lamb of God would be in us. We, we open not our mouth. We don't have to justify. We don't have to say anything. We don't have to prove anything. In fact, to God, this is not uh, an attack. This is Him putting you through uh, the trial of the sufferings of Christ. All right. We'll, we might even see some of that tonight. I don't know. So... And then we went to the book of Revelation, and of course uh, it, it mentioned that uh, his mouth was as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him power. So there you have it. He's the, the, the dragon being uh, Satan, being the devil, is giving power to those people to be able to attack. And, and I hopefully tonight we'll get into some scriptures that really show that. And what we need is not my word, not what I say it says. What we need to do is stick with the scriptures, go through enough scripture, which is going to take a little while, till we just see it and see it and see it and go, oh my God, this is really what this whole book is about. And we've barely started on the explanations now. All right. So then we did go through quite a few scriptures. And, um, <clears throat> okay, the very first scripture I'm going to start with is going to say the exact same thing that I was saying. Hopefully we'll get to that. It's the first scripture we're going to deal with tonight. And it's going to show that even though we're under the trials, even though we're under the, the uh, uh, sufferings of Christ, um, God's allowing that. God's using that. Okay, so let's start off with uh, Psalm 17, beginning with verse 12. Psalm 17. <clears throat> verse 12 says, Like as a lion that is greedy of his prey, as it were a young lion lurking in secret places, Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul. Okay, so the, the disappointing of the lion the, uh, and of these people that join together to attack you, the disappointment isn't that God just speaks to them and tells them all that you're really of him. Uh, or the disappointing of the enemy in that way is not that he... Uh, you know, rebukes them or does a great miracle or any of that stuff. He's talking about deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. And there it is. That's verse 12 or verse uh, 13. Arise, O Lord, to disappoint him because you don't respond with your soul. Your soul... It's the salvation of the soul. One of the first things we started dealing with when we started getting into, and it's what, verse, I don't know, it's pretty quick out of the box on the first chapter. Um, and he plainly says that these enemies that are doing this, that, that is uh, coming about, if you will, um, um, uh, walking about seeking whom he may devour, 
is he's trying to devour you by getting you to deny Jesus like Peter did in that situation. He's, get, he's trying to put you in a situation where you are totally ignorant that, that this is really God and, it's, and this is his sword that he's using for a trial for you um, to be with him um, and uh, uh, trying to get you to justify yourself or, you know, go into self-pity or so many, so many different angles of this. So, yes. Okay, yeah. Did everybody lose audio for? Okay, well, I'm going to go back over this because you saw my mouth moving, but you're supposed to listen to my spirit. I'm kidding. I'll go back over. Um, like a lion that's greedy for his prey, as it were a young lion lurking in secret places, here comes the prayer. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him. Disappoint the enemy, whether it's the devil or the devil through someone. Um, uh, cast him down. Deliver my soul. Okay, so the so again the salvation of the soul is so preeminent in Peter, and really, really, really preeminent in the Psalms. See, we always want to deliver my body, deliver my circumstances, deliver, you know, we're always looking for an escape from, from situations we don't like or don't feel comfortable with or whatever. And God's not, you know, especially in this, these, in, in Peter, God's not dealing with those things at all. He's not trying, he's not just going, oh, my whole job of being a God is just to deliver you from every little thing that you feel is uncomfortable or whatever. Um, he wants to deliver your soul from that fleshly hole that wants to react and respond and, and cover up and uh, that sort of thing. So uh, he says, Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked which is thy sword. So this, this shows that when you're going through the sufferings of Christ, it's not just the enemy attacking you, even if it is the enemy. It's not just a trial that you, you know, somebody's persecuting you. It is God allowing this so that he can get his son, so that he can get the lamb out of you. All right. So then he goes on to say, from the wicked which is thy sword, from men which are thy hand, O Lord. There it is. There it is. These are his hand. This is not just, um, um, you know, all, the, all of the things that we think about when hard times come. It's none of that. It is the place to be with the Lord in his spirit, in his nature, and to carry that forth and to manifest that. And, and one, one of the things we'll find, it'll probably be a little while before we get to that, one of the things that we will find is the, the results of that. The results of that. There are actual positive results of being with the Lord in this way. That, that can do more than almost any other thing. For example, with Jesus, Jesus being the example, uh, he went through all that and he went through it in the right spirit and he, then he went to the cross and he died. And the result is life forevermore for all of us. <laughs> okay. Um, so... From men which are thy hand, O Lord, from men of this world, of the world, which have their portion in this life. See, our portion isn't in this life. See, they may cry out to be delivered all the time, but we don't, especially not in this situation. Um, and whose bellies thou fillest with thy hid treasures, they are full of children, and leave the rest of their substance to their babies. As for me, as for me, 
I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with your likeness. Okay, so in a sense, the salvation of your soul in this situation where you don't stumble over your own flesh, your own uh, uh, preferences, your own, um, you, your soul is saved and you're with the Lord now. Again, this is not talking about salvation uh, uh, so you don't go to heaven or hell. I mentioned to someone the other day, in the Old Testament, they didn't, they didn't talk a lot about salvation from heaven and hell. You know? So, um, as for me, I will behold thy face. Well, where do we get that from? 2 Corinthians 3.18. In righteousness. I'm, and this is, this is Peter's definition of righteousness here. I don't know how we'll get to that, but, but it is. It's, this is his definition of righteousness, that it's as if he has seen the face of the Lord and now he is able to stand with the Lord in that same spirit without all of the flurry and all of the uh, things that just, you know, constantly are in your face and um, obsessiveness over over things and why they do this and this isn't right and all that kind of stuff. Uh, as for me, I'll behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake. So it's like he was asleep to this reality. But now he has awakened with his likeness. With his likeness. Okay, so now it's like the wife of the lamb. Now it's like uh, uh, someone who is not just a Christian. It's someone who has come up to where he is, seen his face, and able to go through the sufferings of Christ and be with him, which Peter certainly didn't do when he walked this earth. Okay, all right. So now let's go to Psalm 7, verse 10. Psalm 7. O Lord my God, in Thee do I put my trust. Save me from all them that persecute me and deliver me, lest he tear, lest he tear my soul like a lion. Okay, so there it is. Uh, his salvation, he, he's saying save me uh, and deliver me, but it his, he wants deliverance from this so he doesn't go through the same thing again and again. And every time these opportunities come to be with the Lord in his sufferings, we personalize it and freak out or explode and get angry and do rash things. Or, or, or one of the things that Peter talks about a lot is, or use our mouth, whether it is to say things back or to justify, or to go to someone else <clears throat> and tell them how bad they're treating you and all this kind of stuff. Uh, he's saying, man, save me from that, this where they would tear at my soul and I would go back to the same thing again and again. All right, so, uh, and deliver me lest he tear my soul like a lion, rending it in pieces while there is none to deliver. O oh, Lord my God, if I have done this, if there be iniquity in my hands, if I have rewarded evil unto him that was at peace with me, yea, I have delivered him that without cause is mine enemy, let the enemy persecute my soul and take it. Yea, let him tread down my life upon the earth and lay mine honor in the dust. Okay, so he's saying, look, if I really have done something wrong, if, I'm, if there's something wrong in my being and what I'm getting from people is just a, a reaction, um, and if you, if you could say a justified reaction because I have done these things, um, then Lord, lay me into the ground, let the wicked run over the top of me. But see, that's the key is that you're with Jesus and he was innocent. He was, and, and the beauty of some of the scriptures in uh, First Peter is amazing uh, when he starts talking about our part 
And then it shows Jesus and how he was. And so, um, uh, let him tread down my life upon the earth and lay mine honor in the dust, Selah. So he's, he's saying, look, Father, this isn't about me doing wrong. And he's not saying it's not fair that they're doing this. He's saying, if I had done all of that, then let him go and you, take, you deal with me, you know, you tread me into the ground too. But he's saying, I know that I'm with you, that they hate me without a cause, just like they do you, and that I will bear this in your spirit the way you bore it. And he says, but to save me in relationship to my soul, please don't let me deny you again. Okay. So, moving right along, turn with me to Psalm 57, verse 4. And while you're turning there, Psalm 57, verse 4. Now, in that last one, he did talk about being persecuted, but it's so funny because he... He doesn't say they persecuted me because I was a Christian or a Jew or whatever. He said they uh, persecute my soul. See, this is that lion. The lion is going after your soul to nip at you, to bite you, to, to claw at you, to roar at you, to, to you know... Uh, like Daniel in the lion's den, you know, there's, that's, that's the goal is to get him to, to do that, to shake you. <clears throat> All right. So he says, uh, Psalm 57, verse four, my soul is among lions. <laughs> All right. So that's it. You know, you can either be dropped down in the lion's den like, like Daniel and run around and hope that you can outrun them until, you know, till they wear, wear down. Or you can stand there and roar back at them. Or you can be like Daniel and you can be at peace knowing that I'm with the Lord in this. I'm, I'm with the Lord. Let the lions roar. Let the people say what they will. Let the people that are God's sword strike me with that sword because they're God's sword. Let those who are His hand do what they will in this situation because in this situation I'm going to be like Daniel and I'm just going to be quiet just like the, just like the lamb did when Jesus, the lamb of God, who opened not his mouth, Daniel. Same thing. Same thing. Same spirit. Okay? So, my soul is, is among lions and I lie even among them that are set on fire even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows and their tongue a sharp sword. Do you see it right there? So it's their tongue. It's what they're saying about you. It's their false accusations. It's their, their judgments. It's their uh, uh, everything that, that they can do to rattle your cage, to, get to, to make sure the lamb doesn't come out of you. Make sure that you deny the lamb. Now again, make sure that you deny Jesus. You know, and there, there are people denying Jesus all over the United States. I mean, because we always think in foreign countries, well, they, they stand and they'll take a bullet in their head or whatever. But th this, is, this is more important to God than denying that you're a Christian. This is denying Him, and this is denying being with Him in His sufferings. All right, so... Uh, at that first part, he said, and I lie even among them that are set on fire. All right. Does that sound familiar to anybody out of Peter? All right. We're going to come back here to this, so don't lose your place in Psalm 57. But let's look at 1 Peter 1.7. The, the trial of your faith being much more precious 
to God than gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. And again, this appearing is in him coming back in the clouds or coming back at the end of time. This is that you're going, it's called a trial. It is a trial up to a certain point and you're going through it, but then you don't give way to your soul and then he comes forth and then he appears. And this word appear or revealed um, is going to happen over and over in Peter because this is his terminology. This is what he uses. Okay, so so there he, he says, okay, so it's a trial. What is what kind of trial? It's a trial of your faith. Okay, How, is it is it uh, uh, just going to make God happy because I'm a good Christian? No, this is the gold standard. This is this is more precious than gold. But in in spiritual realities, it's the gold standard, not equal to gold in the earth. It's higher than that, more precious than that to God, though it be tried with fire, that you might be found under praise. That 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 might be your faith might be found under praise and honor and glory when he begins to come forth. Okay? Now, I'm pulling that scripture out of context right now just to show you the fire thing. One day soon, I will put that in full context so that you can see it's not just a one verse thing that I'm making say that, that the verses around it are clearly declaring what we're talking about. All right, um, back to Psalm 57.4. Let's start that again. My soul is among lions, and I lie even among them that are set on fire, even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. This is a fiery trial. <clears throat> Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. See, everybody wants to go to heaven. You know, we, we, we quote that. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's the only way anybody can get there is to die. All right? God made it that way. This is above the heavens. This is above your thought of heaven or earth or material things or spiritual things. This rises to the very heart of God. I told you it's the gold standard in this heart. It is more precious than anything else that could be considered gold, not even physical gold, but, you know, gold in that sense. And um, so he says, uh, above the heavens, be thou exalted. But he's saying in the middle of this, okay, so, <clears throat> okay, let's look at it like this, okay? They, my soul is among lions. Okay, picture this guy saying this. My soul is among lions. Um, their teeth are, um, are spears and arrows, and their tongue is a sharp sword. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. He's saying, I'm ready. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to have your spirit. I'm not going where all flesh goes, Christian flesh or, or not unsaved flesh. It is natural. It is flesh for us to rise up and protect ourselves. Self-survival, which includes, uh, I don't want to lose my reputation, so I better, you know, protecting my reputation, my things, my whatever. And so... Um, so he's saying, in the midst of the teeth and the swords and all that kind of stuff, the spears, be thou exalted, O God, above the heaven. Let thy glory be above all the earth. See, he's, it's like you're no longer in the earth in this. You've come to such a place with the Lord that it's his realm. It's where incense rises to it's where beauty rests in the heart of god and what he think what his definition of beauty see um 
Let thy glory be above all the earth. They have prepared a net for my steps. Okay, so we got teeth and swords and spears. Now we got a net. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed, but it hasn't given in yet. Okay. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bound. They have digged the pit. Okay, so now they're going to bury you before me. Um, <clears throat> now, you can liken this unto Joseph. Okay. Uh, Joseph was, was the firstborn, even though he was like the 13th or something like that of all the, all the sons of Israel. Um, and yet he got the coat of many colors. And, um, but... But at first, he, he got pride over being the firstborn. He got pride over being the Father's love, which is not Christ at all, the Son of the Father's love, if you will. And he got puffed up and all this kind of stuff. And so the brothers threw him in a pit, sold him into Egypt. But from that time on, uh, we, the record we have is more and more and more and more he conformed to the lamb until God said, okay, that's what's on the throne. So he put him on the throne only, only second to Pharaoh. <clears throat> Be exalted, okay. But what's being exalted? You know, it's that lamb that's taken over you and the, he'll exalt the lamb and Joseph's got the lamb in him and the ways, you know, this, you know, his response to them was, you know, you may have meant this for evil. Your motives were wrong, but he's not pointing that out. He's not even doing it in that spirit. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good, you know. And so he, he realizes um, this spirit and the, the thing that God wants. God meant this for good. Well, what's the good? And it's not just that we can, there'll be a famine, we can feed people. It is that his spirit could be placed on the throne, enthroned on the earth, but above the earth to God. Um, into the midst whereof they are fallen themselves, Selah, my heart is fixed, O God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. All right, so um, the, the point of that isn't necessarily, well, we, don't, we didn't see it with Jesus where he's singing and going, yeah, da da da, da. Now, now, you do see it um, um, in the upper room where they, had, they ate the Passover, which he was going to be, and um, they sang a hymn. And then they went out, and then he went to the Garden of Gethsemane, and now he's not singing anymore. And, you know, he's saying things like, if it be your will, deliver me, but nevertheless, not my will. And then he even says, now is my soul troubled. OK, so there, there is this part. You don't walk into this and, you, you know, there's a buildup of the lions and the stuff. And it starts building to a degree that you have time to react. But then you began to say, I'm not going that way, because you've probably done it other times. I had. And um, so when it's over with and Christ has come forth, there is joy unspeakable and full of glory, you know, uh, because you were with him for him. He wasn't just with you for you. It's so different. It's so different. All right. Um, so let's see. Uh, all right. So when it says um, uh, the fire up here, I forgot to mention another scripture. Uh, this is still Psalm 57, 4. My soul is among lions, and I lie even among them that are set on fire, even the sons of men. Uh, and there's more to be said on this. Again, dealing with the fire and the trial is going to be a whole category in itself. But we're just, we're just sort of casting breadcrumbs along the way to keep you going <laughs> until you can eat the full meal deal with the Lord himself and not just in a class. Um, uh, 
1 Peter 4, 12, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you, but rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when His glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. So there's that pattern. It's the pattern over and over and over again. There is, a, there is you know, there, there may be a thinking that this is strange, until we begin to realize that this is, um, I'm, this is an opportunity to be a partaker of the sufferings of Christ and to be with Him. Um, and so once that begins to kick in, then, uh, let's see, inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when His glory shall be revealed, there's the word revealed, He appears when He appears in us. In this way, there's the, there's the glory. Some of you in the early going remember the pattern. And, you know, it started with wanting to give God glory. And it had a hope. But then there was a, a, a another hope that was, you know, I, I hope I don't go against His Spirit in this trial. And then there is that you, you do stay with Him in that. And then... There's always glory at the end. There's always glory. <clears throat> All right. So, um, let's go to Psalm 35. Psalm 35. And my soul shall be joyful in the Lord. It shall rejoice in His salvation. Okay. False witnesses did rise up. Okay, so... If you have studied 1 Peter at all, you know that this thing of false witnesses is a very huge part of it. That's where the, the roar comes from, the, from the false witnesses. Okay? And um, that's where the fire comes from. And that's where the, the spears and the, you know, the, 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 the arrows and all of that come from. It's all necessary within the realm of the sufferings of Christ. Okay, So false witnesses did rise up. Well, think it not strange, people. Isn't that the next verse? No, it's not. But we just read it a few minutes ago. So um, did rise up. They laid to my charge things that I knew not. Okay, so you're getting a clear picture of 1 Peter and of the many, many phases that he goes through and he's... This is always an element that has to be in there. Even if it's, even if it's uh, not mentioned, um, the context will show you that that had to happen for these things to, to take place. <clears throat> okay. Um, verse 12, this 35, Psalm 35, 12. They rewarded me evil for good. Ah. Ah. What is that, Alana? They rewarded me evil for good. Don't worry, we'll find out. To the spoiling of my soul. Again, going after the soul, your soul, your soul. You know, this is pretty easy pickings for the enemy. You know, we can be strong in this, or we can be strong in that. But boy, when somebody starts rising up false witnesses and laying things to your charge and people that used to love you believed it and all this kind of stuff and all these things are going on, your soul can get out of control. Not that I would know anything about it. But I do. But that's where... End result better be with the Lord. Or you're going to miss another time just like Peter did. Another time. <clears throat> they rewarded me evil for good to the spoiling of my soul. But as for me, have you ever heard that phrase before? We've already spoke of it one time tonight. It comes up all the time in the scripture. There always has to be, here's what's wrong, here's what's out of control. But as for me... This is the trial of my faith to be with him in his sufferings. Uh, but as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting 
and my prayer returned into my own bosom. I behaved myself as though he had been my friend or brother. I bowed down heavenly as one that mourneth for his mother. All right, so here's the contrast. And here is, well, well, I'll be honest with you. I mean, this is the contrast of evil, the, the roar, the, the weapons, the false accusations, the laying the charge. That, those are the evildoers as described by Peter. What we just read here is the spirit of the lamb in us more precisely known by Peter and identified as either the, the good or um, well-doing, so common and um, clear. If you understand those definitions, when you read Peter, you'll see it. And it'll always, it, it'll always go along with this without, and if it doesn't give, the, have to say this over and over again, that I did this and that was well doing and this was the nature of Christ and I did this and it was the lamb in this situation. And instead of reacting, instead of hating, instead of doing bad to them, uh, it'll say that with well doing, you may put to silence those evildoers, if you will. All right. That might have answered your question. Um, in my mind adversity, they rejoiced and gathered themselves together. Yea, the abjects, wonder what he's trying to get to with that, gathered themselves together against me. And I didn't even know it. I knew it not. This was going on behind my back. Well, some of the people that are doing this and gathering together, you know, and rejoicing in my adversity, I've been talking to for weeks and they seem fine around me. You know, trust me, the Lord makes sure that a little bird carries that information to you to see, are you going to love you know, unconditionally, we say that, so I'll just say that one. Are we going to let Christ live in us in the, that situation? Or did that information change our attitude toward them? Have we, has it turned us into an evildoer or didn't turn us into it? It just manifested the evildoer that we were hidden under our cloak of righteousness. <clears throat> All right. Um, and I knew it not. They did tear me. See, this is, this is the deal, okay? And ceased not with hypocritical mockers in feasts. They gnashed upon me with their teeth. Lord, how long wilt thou look on? Rescue my soul from their destructions. My darling from the lions, okay? So here it is. All of that ugliness. All of that unjustness. All of that that is so wrong, and his cry is, Lord, rescue my soul from their destructions. Not rescue me, not save my reputation, not Lord, fix this, Lord, uh, reveal to some of those that have gathered with them that the person or persons who are heading this up have wrong motives and they got their own set of problems. And maybe I need to go to them and explain that to them. Maybe that way they can be on my side. No, there's just one salvation. There's just one deliverance. And that is deliver my soul from these destructions because they'll tear me down and I will, I will deny him to save myself, which is exactly what Peter did. Deny Jesus to save himself. Yeah. All right. So uh, in that verse 11, false witnesses did rise up. So I want to read now, uh, I, Keep your place there, but but either turn with me or let me just read. First Peter three sixteen. 
having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you, okay, so this is huge. In Peter, we're reading 1 Peter 3, having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as what? Evildoers, see, they're not just doing evil things. The evildoer, as described by Peter in his epistle, is always this spirit. And y'all remember I drew a little chart on the board and, and they are the evil do doers that persecute us. But if we respond back, we're an evil doer. And Peter will use that example of us too, if we don't go with the lamb. Okay. So um, they speak evil of you. They are false witnesses. They lay to your charge, speak evil as of evil doers. They may be ashamed. Um, as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation or your good manner of life in Christ. Okay, so a little hint here. The word conversation in the King James actually means your manner of life. But, but, it's not talking about the basic Christian witness that you have to the public. It's talking about the manner of life that you have in the fiery trial that involved the sufferings of Christ. And it consistently has that connotation. Now sometimes it's not so obvious and that's why we're going to go through it. But because one thing that w if I could only explain this to you um, it'll have one word like conversation and then in some places you'll go, yeah, it clearly says that, but what about here and here? But many times in Peter, he'll add another word to that and that word becomes a key so that you really understand the definition of this in all situations, okay? So we'll, we'll I want to get into that and show that. Um, uh, falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. Okay, so in the scriptures above, okay, um, false witnesses did rise up against me. Okay, but you have a good conscience, though they speak evil of you, but your conscience is that you're with the Lord. It's not like, well, I know I never did anything wrong. That's good. That's, a, that's an important part of it. But the more important part is, I'm going to be with him in this. I am not going to be with me and my soul freaking out over this. Okay? So then he says, um, uh, whereas they speak evil of you, they may be ashamed that they falsely accuse your good manner of life in Christ. Okay? So there is a place... I'll just drop this right now. There is a place that um, that some that are evildoers can be turned. Right? And there are there's more than one example of this in First Peter. All right. Uh, and then also in verse four, uh, chapter four. 1 Peter 4, 4, wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. Okay, so we'll, when the day comes, when we get to 1 Peter chapter 4, which should be like, you know, it could be a little while. We, we'll discuss that. All right, so... Um, Okay, so I'm just going to end. This is terrible because I'm literally probably going to end with, I'm going to just read this scripture, hopefully. And uh, it's going to be about an hour. <laughs> Please tell me. If I, get a, if I get enough witnesses saying, stop after 30 minutes, then I'll cry because we'll never get this. But anyway, all right, First Peter 5, 5 through 10, okay? So listen to what this says. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. 
meaning somebody that's over you, not, not because they're good, they could be evil, but submit yourself unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. He's talking about this same spirit. For God resisteth the proud. He's saying, you know, if you're rebelling against authority, see the elder may not have anybody over them in that sense. And we're just talking, this is not necessarily, this is talking about age. Uh, but you have somebody over you that can mistreat you. And you're still supposed to have the Spirit of Christ. He may not. And he may be evil. God may not look at that as, well, he's, he's got pride because he's reacting to somebody over him because he doesn't have anybody. He's talking to the younger. Okay? And, you know, you could be, you know, I'm 71. Somebody could be 85 and over me, and I'm the younger. See, that's just talking to me then. See that? <laughs> how that works. Uh, For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, not under the elder. That he may exalt you in due time. There it is. There's, there is the glory. There is the exaltation. The Lamb is exalted. Always. Um... And due time is, in the last days or the last times or all of the examples it uses in First Peter, it's always the same thing. Uh, casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. See? And this is not He's against you. He's allowing this. That, that guy is His hand, His mighty hand. Not just an evil elder or whatever, however you want to put it. Um, be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, do you see how that dovetails right into this? He's talking about those that are over him, and it even backs up from here to verse 1 of, of chapter 5, of authorities and people that have control and us learning not how to point out what's wrong with all the leaders, but us having the Spirit of Christ, okay? Um, be, uh, so so uh, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Well, this is kind of hard. Well, cast all your care upon him because he cares for you. Yeah, okay, but, you know, I'm, think, I'm feeling like I'm going to react to this. Be sober. Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He's trying to devour you and get your soul to respond over this person that's over you and that's unjust in their, in their doing, whom resist steadfastly in the faith, not in the flesh, by by. By the test trying of your faith, it's a fiery trial, but by, by the trying of your faith, it may be found as gold unto God. Um, uh, knowing that the same afflictions are happening in all of us that are of Him to be, to be found that Christ could live in us in this way. Um, are, are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world, but the God of all grace who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ. Okay, you're not going to understand that unless you understand what we're called to. Called us unto his eternal glory by Jesus Christ, by that life and nature, after that you've suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Does that sound like it reads correct now? Does, did it sound like before? <laughs> it was like, well, this is just talking about, you know, who's in charge and you ought to submit and humility and obedience. No, it's talking about that same spirit. We'll eventually get to those scriptures and even add some to that. But I hope that that was worth going a little longer because it's so good if you see it if you really see this father we just love you and i thank you and father i pray that you'll continue you you by your spirit and 
about your son and his life and then his life within us, that son of your love that you love and you love to see him in us in this way, uh, that you would continue to stir our hearts and Lord, to take the scales of, off of our eyes to see that these are the very things that all of these verses are talking about. That we may grasp not my teaching because it's not mine. I got it from you. I didn't know it till you shared it with me. And they're not going to know it by me talking it. They're going to know it by you sharing with them. I love you and I love them, Father. And I, I seek diligently in the Word to lay before them the things that are truly of your heart. And I seek diligently to cover them so that, so that they can grasp and, and get hold of and run with the realities that are in your heart. I, I so desire that you would bless them and move on them and, and show them the son of your love in this beautiful way. Father, I ask it in Jesus' name, in the one's name that we're praying about, in the one's name that is in us, in the one's name that is the son of your love placed inside of us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Well, thank you. Love you guys. Thank you so much. And keep, keep going. Stay hungry. And please don't let up. There's so much of Him and so little time in our lives. Amen. Bye-bye. <laughs>